Hello again, my friends. I know it's been a while, but this is Adam with SCA.Training, and I'm excited to be recording again. Uh, I, I don't want to make any promises, but I do think they're going to be coming more often. So there were a couple of things that prompted me to get back into recording and to send out a uh, video dialogue here. Sorry, I'm still going a little low tech, but bear with me. I think this will be useful. The question is, how or when to become an AST. Now there were two things that prompted me to record this video and the first one was just so many people ask me you know how can I become an AST I wanna do training I'm getting certified how can I become an AST and while that's a good question we'll cover it I think there's another one another uh, maybe even more important question that I'd like to pose and that's when should I become an AST so we'll go through this and I'll answer both of those now, uh, as usual, I was over preparing for this and I started digging deep into all the different modules, the levels and requirements, points of advice and points of challenge and the aim of each course. Uh, we're not going to get into that here, but I think this will provide for some really interesting content in coming lessons, so stay tuned. First, let's look at someone who's a coffee roaster. So many of us were roasting. Uh, as hobbyist or even professionally and then we get doing some training we start to engage in some of the SCA modules uh, this person here may want to select certain courses that are most pertinent to their profession they're a roast master um, maybe they've been taking green coffee roasting and sensory skills so foundation level intermediate level and professional level here we're also going to talk about how these points add up right uh, some of you have heard about the old coffee diploma and now the CSP coffee skills program diploma uh, foundation courses um, do add up although this is <laughs> this is incorrect math here uh, we're just gonna go with it foundation courses are worth five points each intermediate are worth 10 points each and professional are worth 25 points each so uh, this specific roast master could always add on more courses in the future but let's just say they've taken green and roasting and sensory skills up to the professional level so there this is a great example of someone who's saying you know what I would love to teach green coffee as an AST and I'd love to teach roasting as an AST or sensory skills as an AST how can I get started another person would be let's say a barista uh, professional barista they've been making coffee they love customer service again they've acquired a lot of courses they've added them up along the way so here we see the foundation introduction to coffee introduction to coffee is a 10 point class while sensory brewing and barista skills are five points each so that adds up to 25 we'll say the math is right on this page but let's say in our example here, the barista's taken, uh, you know, sensory, quite a few sensory classes, brewing classes, barista skills, things they use in the cafe every day. And they're saying, hey, you know, I like these courses. I'd like to become an AST. How do I do that? So, for example, a path to become an AST. Uh, here's a different set of courses. But um, on that last example, our barista was a professional in two modules brewing and barista skills but not in the sensory so uh, you can only teach at a level where you hold a professional certificate so if you want to apply for the AST course you must have at least one professional certificate because uh, your intention is that you will become a AST a authorized SCA trainer for that course so uh, I've made a diagram up here again and there I labeled the points accurately and let's say this person up here uh, we'll just call them a uh, roaster but they're also uh, quite quite interested in barista training so they've taken they've taken uh, a green course an intro to coffee course but they've got roasting sensory skills and barista skills up to the professional level so at any point then they can uh, choose to take that AST course once they've got at least one professional course under their belt they can take the AST course and then uh, here's a checkbox up here are they able to train uh, 
uh, checkbox yes on intro to coffee anyone who passes the AST course can uh, teach intro to coffee and naturally it's pretty uh, a pretty simple course for anyone who's become a professional uh, can they teach green coffee no there's no professional certificate can they teach roasting sensory skills yes yes they can and uh, rather they can if they register for that module and then they have to pay for that module we'll talk a little about that uh, can they teach brewing no maybe they're excellent with extraction they can brew on any device but they haven't taken a professional level course so they cannot register for teaching that course barista skills yes uh, you cannot be an AST trainer uh, that is train new ASTs if you are uh, uh, not an employee of the SEA. So um, up here, this example, this person, uh, they should have a professional certificate in at least one module, pass the two-day AST course. Uh, there's some coursework and then uh, really what you do is you demonstrate that you can put together a good program, learning objectives, you can run a course with learning outcomes for the other people in the class and then you're graded and evaluated on that. You also need to learn how to use the system. There's a lot of online tools, uh, grading, there's a lot of integrity that goes into being an AST because you're joining a large group of other professionals around the world who are instructing courses. And then you need to register and pay to teach each of these module types. So let's use this example up top. This uh, roast master, she has a roasting professional, sensory skills professional, and barista skills professional. Now, does she need to uh, pay for each of these three modules and instruct each of these three modules? No. Maybe she is a roaster and she spends all her day in the roastery and so, but she says, you know what, I've had a lot of people talk to me about uh, taking roasting courses and naturally the sensory courses go right along with that. I'd like to teach those too. So she needs to pay for each of those modules separately she gains access to the online tools, the uh, examinations, so that she can build her coursework and um, she pays to uh, have the privilege to teach roasting and sensory skills. And then she can register those classes online through the sca.coffee website. However, she says, you know what, I don't spend much time in the bar and I don't deal with many baristas, so I don't want to make the financial investment to buy the barista skills package in order to instruct that and so she doesn't have to do that. She's still an AST, she can still uh, open up the barista skills course at any time and go ahead with that, but doesn't have to. Alternatively, she might say, you know, uh, it's gonna be a while before I teach roasting. There's some lab equipment that's kind of um, more expensive to get into, so I just wanna start with sensory skills. She could just start with sensory skills, six months down the road, add roasting, a year later, add barista skills. And in the meantime, maybe take some brewing or green coffee, intermediate and professional courses, and get certified to uh, teach those. Lots of options once you get to that professional level and AST level. So anecdotally, and just to add to the discussion, I wanted to share some confessions of an AST. And this really leads me into the question, not so much of how, which we've addressed to this point, but when should you become an AST? And um, here we're going to walk through, I'll just, you know, work through a bit of the slides here, bear with me, but it really is a great honor and a responsibility to be an a AST. Uh, it's quite an independent position where the SCA trusts us to build uh, modules to run courses that are a good representation of the SCA and of other ASTs. So, for example, you don't want to be that AST who everyone says, oh, you should go to this training school because it's super easy to get certificates. Um, you know, everyone passes the class and uh, really it just waters down the education or the value for others. And so, um, you know, I always took pride in preparing well and giving a really good, uh, challenging and beneficial class for my students, making them earn their certificates. And I know a lot of ASTs operate the same way. Uh, we need to produce consistent and valuable results. You know, if I'm training in America or in China, or if I have friends who are training down in Australia 
or let's say in Germany. I, I hope that we're all training at uh, similar quality and consistency. We're speaking the same language, um, not uh, English, but speaking the same coffee language and professional language. It's a large financial investment to be an AST. And uh, I, you know, I jumped right into this. I was trying to build a career. I was trying to build my coffee company at the time. And <clears throat> it was a real challenge. I didn't, I didn't realize what a big jump it was to go from student and really, you know, even a high achieving student to becoming a trainer and having the confidence to uh, put together programs and get in front of your students. It's a lot of work. Um, you can do it but it's much more than a certificate. The certificate's just kind of uh, your ticket to get through the gate and uh, ticket to play. The ROI, the return on the investment, because it is a significant investment, a lot of, a lot of uh, my listeners, a lot of students we discuss, you know, how much the classes cost, the certifications cost, and then the AST uh, class is on top of that. Um, you also have to invest in those modules. You have to unlock each of the five modules if you want to teach all five. So really your ROI mimics an ROR, rate of rise. And uh, what you do in the beginning, um, it probably took me six months just to get off the ground after I had my AST, which was around November. And it wasn't until that next spring and summer that I was running my first courses. But it was it was a good commitment and it was a good pressure for me to build a training program, I had to keep kind of building a brand, not just my coffee brand, but a personal brand as a trainer. You got to figure out who do students want to take a class with and who do they trust because uh, the SCA definitely sells itself. There's value in that, but you also align yourself with an instructor. And so it's important that you can recruit students. Seth Godin has a famous book and a concept called The Dip. And this is where many entrepreneurs fail. And as an AST, you really are an independent contractor, really, with the SCA. They give you guidelines, but you, you've got to build a program. And uh, you're investing time, you're building PowerPoints, you're trying to recruit students. You just feel like you're failing for the first three months or six months. You're trying to launch this. And uh, you've got to get through that dip. If you're really committed, you've got to expect the dip, but then you've got to keep pushing. And the dip might be three months it might be nine months you know it might be a year in three months but uh, just keep recruiting and keep running classes consistently even if they're small classes you just got to get some experience what makes a good class what makes a bad class what did you fail to set up for uh, how did you not prepare or how could you prepare differently and then you really have to build a business model around it so you know a couple good classes a couple you know a couple that are profitable uh, you have your setup expenses, but you collect some tuition. Maybe you pay rent for a facility that you're using. Uh, you have to pay for all the certificates um, with the SCA. You know, there's a business model and there's a profit loss. How many students can you recruit and run a course for uh, still making money? And um, is this the best use of your time when you could be roasting coffee, when you could be serving coffee in a cafe? So uh, if you can build a business model that's sustainable, you know, consistently creating value, and that's the key. It's not about just making great coffee, roasting great coffee. You've got to create great value, and you've got to make that value for your students. You've got to hand it off. You can't just hold on to it, and that's the difference between being a student and a trainer. So uh, should you be an AST? Um, maybe, maybe how I think you know how and at least there's a program in place that you can walk through how but when um, that's a really good question we can have a discussion I'd love to hear from you you can reach me on WeChat here's a QR code you can scan it in or you can go to www.sca.training of course uh, start a conversation in the show notes of the YouTube channel here and look forward to hearing from you because it is a big question it's a big investment it's a great one but like I said, uh, I actually, I took six months to get it up and running. And then in between my license renewal, I actually took a year off just because I knew that I needed to get the business model back in place. Thanks for listening. It's good to chat again and keep up the great work. Welcome to the coffee crew.